All right, well, if you're a biological woman, you better shut up and get comfortable with losing to men in transgender sports, or not transgender sports, female sports. Female sports is the way we're saying it now. That's the message coming out of U.S. Congress. Uh, the House Oversight Committee held a hearing on transgender athletes and women and girls sports on Tuesday, and it was full of posturing. Uh, calling people who express any concern about this as transphobic. Now, here's a clip that's gone viral. This is Congresswoman Summer Lee. She was called a misogynist by competitive swimmer Riley Gaines after she accused Gaines of being transphobic. Uh, Lee actually tried to get that statement struck from the record because she said that Gaines was engaged in personality so she can dish it out, but she can't take it. Watch. Such as teamwork and goal setting. In terms of mental health, studies show that participating in youth sports is associated with lower rates of anxiety and depression, lower amounts of stress, higher self-esteem and confidence. Women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety and fairness. And Ranking Member Lee, if my tes testimony makes me transphobic, then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Thank you. I now, thank you, uh, Ms. Gaines. I now recognize Ms. Perry for her opening statements. Good afternoon, Chairman McLean, Ranking Member Lee, and distinguished members of the subcommittee. My name is Sarah Parshall Perry. I am a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. As a former varsity athlete, the mother of a girls varsity athlete, and former senior counsel for civil rights at the Department of Education, I have, as the saying goes. Uh, Madam Chair, excuse me, I move to have uh, the gentlewoman's words taken down. Words taken The committee down. will suspend. What she's asking for here is for the accusation of being misogynic, misogynistic to be struck from the record. You can keep playing it because they're just going to mumble for a few minutes and then you see what happens. Uh, so, yes, she specifically does not want it to be on record. That Madam she Chair, was, she's engaging in personalities. What she says here is that her calling me something was engaging in personalities. Can I just ask how it's fair to be called transphobic? There's a... Thing. I would say men disguising themselves as women are engaging in personalities. Order. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, That's hang on. Order, Green. order. Let's let's get a ruling. The chair. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. AOC. <clears throat> so you don't like to you don't like to dish out bad names. Yeah, only I can call you something. You can't call something. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. So I'm going to. Let's hear it. What's the verdict, Your Honor? Okay, I move to withdraw the point of order. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ms. Lee. So uh, I now they must have told her Could that you back. can't do that. Right. You can't move to restrict something from the record. It's on camera. And if you just restrict it, it's just the written version, which no one will read. We've all seen it now. Right. This isn't the White House where the president can give a speech and then later the White House comes out with their transcript and there are huge swaths of the transcript missing from right. the, the video. So she threw the dagger by calling the day's witnesses transphobic, but she couldn't take any daggers back. Um, that call now is on the record. She's been called a misogynist and it will stick. Here's how she responded to that on X. Uh, she says, I would have hoped that the first oversight Dems hearing that I presided over would be on holding big oil, big pharma or banks accountable for preying on hardworking families. Instead, it's another extremist Republican hearing attacking trans kids. What a cruel, unserious party. Now, I don't know why. Let's leave this picture up. She thinks that that petulant photo will endear her to people um, like she looks like a crybaby and she we know that she was accused of being a misogynist and that is an unserious response i would say but i guess she posted this herself thinking now wow i'm really showing them right, right. okay uh, the comments on this post are pretty great i just brought one screenshot where someone says nope you're a misogynist and you can never strike that from the record why do you hate women um, I like the top one. You got your ass handed to you and it was glorious. That's from Nuclear Taco. Right. Um, so, you know, again, and the one at the bottom calling her a crybaby and a wannabe totalitarian and a racist. Um, so there was a lot of this rhetoric. I want to play you AOC 
saying that now she makes an argument that is truly dizzying, almost too stupid to even give airtime to, but we're going to try and follow her logic. This is a brand new paradigm, she's saying, that if we validate biological sex, then we can then go and touch women's genitals. That's what she's saying, that this is a ruse to get to touch real women. It's almost an admission that there is a difference between biological women and trans women. Uh, it's hard to follow this argument, but let's try. I started to realize that a lot of these proposals here um, involve invasion of privacy of all women. Ms. Goss Graves, can you tell us a little bit about what sex testing looks like for youth in states with trans athletic bans? It, it's terrible. Uh, in some states, any individual could challenge whether someone is a girl enough to play. In some states, it requires actual a genital verification, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. um, and there aren't, it's not as if there. Oh. And let me just stop you right there. You said there are some proposals. I mean, we've seen this in Ohio. There was a proposed ban on trans athletes that originally allowed for genital examinations on minors in order to quote unquote protect women. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. And so we're seeing here in this guise, under the guise of not only trying to further marginalize trans women and girls, we are talking about opening up all women and girls to genital examinations when they are under age. That's right. Potentially just because someone can point to someone and say, I don't think you're a girl. That's correct. And we're saying this in an environment of a post-Dobbs America, where states are criminalizing access to abortion and want nothing more than data on women to figure out when, who's getting a menstrual cycle, who doesn't have one. What? And yeah, she's we're really supposed stupid. to believe that this is gonna make us better and safer. What the hell? Okay. So she's not at all addressing the issue that there is an unfair competitive advantage that is hurting female athletes. Right, Instead, that's the heart she's of the saying, oh, but this will make everyone mm -hmm. submit a vagina as proof. And this is a problem because it will allow for data collection on women based on these vaginal inspections. Now, no biological woman has said, I had to put up my vagina in order to compete. And wouldn't a simple test for this be sex assigned at birth? So right. we could then skip these vaginal probes that she says we will then be subject yeah. to. You're, you're born naked <clears throat> and the doctors at the hospital make a determination. Oh, girl, boy, girl, right. boy. You've got XX chromosome, XY chromosome. Girl, boy, done. Here you go. Here's your paperwork. All humans get a vaginal inspection or a genital inspection at birth. Yeah. And so maybe that should stick. And then we don't have to subject anybody to any genital inspection. Right. For if there's sports. some sort of, if there's some sort of a question as to what your gender is. Right. Um, you know, you, first of all, you have an ID card, right. That you presumably got and you had to show your sex, whether your driver's license or otherwise. Right. right. Um, but yeah, if you, if it got to that point, Hey, here's your, you know, you submit well, a birth here's certificate. Well, here's a question. How many, how many biological women have been asked to show their vaginas in order to compete? Is this a problem that we need to start worrying about? Um, I'm just asking, right? She's saying that this is something that's going to become a ruse for data collection because they will look at your vagina and know when you menstruated last, and then they're going to start collecting data on us like abortion clinics have it's ridiculous. been accused of yeah, Don't doing. even give it any, I mean, right. it's ridiculous. Um, now, there is a way actually to prove your chromosomes without looking at anyone's genitals. And in fact, uh, I do want to admit that non-biological women 
have had this happen, not biological women, but intersexed women. I want to um, introduce you to Maria Jose Martinez Patino. She was a world-class hurdler who was denied participation in World University Games in the 80s because she had XY chromosomes that was found on a blood test. So she did not have to submit her vaginals. This was when they did sex testing in Olympic sports based on blood test. She hadn't known that before, that she had a um, XY chromosome. She was asked then to fake an injury in order to get out of the competition, and she refused. People call her a trans athlete's hero. She's not trans. She was a straight woman who was intersexed. It's clearly a different thing to allow her to compete and ask women to compete against biological men, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Clearly, those are different things. Um, but advocates for advocates for trans athletes say, "Oh, so no women should suck it up." It's well, Jamie Lee Curtis is a straight woman. Yes, right, and she's acknowledged that she also is uh, intersex. Yes, I so, thought that was a rumor. Um, I mean, I well, I don't know. I heard that that's a rumor, but apparently that she has there's like some X Y chromosome issue. But I don't know. Uh -huh. she, You're I the trans best I cheerleader from Long Island. Uh, That's from yeah. your friends reference. No, you didn't get it. No, I didn't. Get okay, it I never get any friends references. Okay, uh, David, did you get that one, Philip? Anybody? I no? don't. I don't. I don't watch Friends. You guys I, don't I get my friends it. references. Okay. Yes, David would, but I think he had a power outage. That's why he's so quiet. Oh, okay. Okay, okay fine. Um, <laughs> now, anyway, I want to get back to this idea that women should just sort of suck it up and compete against biological men because that's what this woman, National Women's Law Center pres President Fatima Gross Goss. There's no R. Her last name's not Gross, but I think what she says is Gross. Uh, Fatima Goss Graves says that. Uh, female athletes should learn to lose gracefully because transgender competitors are here. And success in school sports depends on a whole range of factors, including how hard you work and coaching and access to really good resources and facilities. And trans students participate in sports for the same reason as their kids, because it is fun, because it creates belonging and community, because it teaches so much about persistence and leadership and, and discipline, unless they learn to lose gracefully, hopefully, and often they learn to win with dignity, hopefully. Um, they learn to do the sort of work that means you have higher grades and stay connected to school. I want every kid to have that chance, to have the chance to play. So I feel compelled to just end my testimony with a few ideas for the committee to pursue if it really wants to work on this issue. We could make it safer for student athletes who report harassment and sexual misconduct. We could address resource dis Okay. Uh, I liked Jennifer Say. She was the Levi executive who was uh, fired because she spoke out against school lockdowns. She said, where were these Democrats talking about the wonderful connection of sports during two years of lockdowns? Now we think everyone should play sports whenever the F they feel like it because it's such a positive experience, except during lockdowns. Stay the heck home. Uh, so that was an interesting take. So, OK, she wants women to just be gracious, you know, be, allow men into their sports. So here is an example of one woman who did just that. This is Kristen Chalmers. Uh, she is the one on the bronze podium. This is third place at the female race at the Illinois State Cycle Cross Comp Championship over the weekend. She lost to the two men to her left, trans-identified men who were competing as women and calling themselves Tessa Johnson and Evelyn Williamson. These two have been dunking on women all year, so much so that they hold hands while doing it. Take a look at this picture. They've lapped all the competitors so they can hold hands while everyone else who's a biological bio woman and doesn't have that muscle mass can't even, you don't even see them. No ladies in this picture so they can, while they lap you, hold hands. Uh, the one called Williamson, the dark haired one, is also reportedly in a polyamor polyamorous relationship with fellow trans cyclist Austin Killips, who competes also against biological women and has become notorious for shoving that in their face. Um, and also was, uh, I believe, 
Um, sh- sh- uh, he. Look how Austin big. How much Killips, bigger? Look how how much taller these guys are. Right. Next to the uh, woman. Was um, notorious for shoving a competitor during a race. A, a man entered a woman's race and shoved her, but thinks that they have the right to be there. So not only are they lapping women, pushing women out of the way, taking their gold medals, uh, but also using these events for their gay love display because that's not polyamorous. They are both men. That is homosexuality in women's sports. So let's call it what it is. So let us know what you think about this. Um, Is this now a new problem that uh, biological women are going to have to put up their vaginas for inspections? Is this the problem? Is it data collection? Or is it a simple problem that could be fixed in a way that it has been fixed all along? Let us know what you think of that. That's going to do it for us today. That's ridiculous. Um, And I guess men would have to do the same thing. I mean, they'd have to show... Show your balls. Yeah, they'd have to go out there like, all right, can you step up here? I mean, if there's really a question, like I see your facial hair and your Adam's apple. Yeah. But I want to double check that you don't also have a vagina. Uh Uh-huh. And is there a weight limit? Like how much do the balls have to weigh? I mean, you're six foot three. You're six foot three of an Adam's apple and you have face stubble. Right. I just got to double check that you don't also have a vagina. You're, you've entered a woman's competition. Do you, yeah. Sir, um, do you know where you are? You've entered a woman's cycling competition. Right. I mean, she's opening up to then let's do blood tests. If you don't want anyone to have to submit their vagina, then we'll go back to blood tests. Do you want that? I mean, uh, because that's that w- is no longer done in most sports. Um, but again, there is a signed at birth and obvious biology Um, At the very least, we're not talking about this totally bogus hormone level or puberty level because hormones and puberty are not the only thing that gives biological advantage. But, uh, you know, that seemed to be something that people postured about. Now, today in the UK, um, there was a debate uh, and we're going to cover that tomorrow because the gender debate is no longer sort of on Twitter, but it is in Parliament now, and I, in what I think is a more progressive way than at least the United States is doing it. Um, although I do want to say, we did not play you the many women who spoke out uh, coherently and sp- you know expertly and bravely on behalf of biological women. You can watch that. We were only showing you the um, the idiots. Yeah, really contentious parts. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, (laughs) yeah, Uh, exactly. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.